Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited. If you guys can't already tell, I'm in a different layout than I normally am. I'm in my own makeup room. <laughs> So I actually, me and my husband decided to turn our our apartment, since we don't really have any family over here, just because we don't really have any family in the area, into a kind of like a studio apartment where you have your bed in the living room, and then you have like your rooms that you use for other stuff. So he has his gaming room office area, and now I have my own makeup room. We did take our bed out of this room, and now it's just my makeup room. So I will be doing a makeup tour to kind of show you guys what I have in this room, um, how I have it laid out, everything like that. So it's super, super cute cute so super excited to show you guys this video i still want to buy buy a vanity chair and buy a couple more things for the room but i'm super excited to have this makeup room have this opportunity to have a makeup room in general and i'm just super super grateful so with everything being said let's get started into this video so today i'm bringing you a video it's not like my other videos <laughs> This is a savings video. Savings, what I'm doing right now to save money, um, live better, save money, what I am doing to use the products I buy up, save money, um, and kind of help what, what savings challenges I'm doing this time around. So right now, I am doing a savings challenge. Um, I have two separate savings accounts. Actually, I have three savings accounts. Um, my third savings account is for basically when I hit, when I hit a big amount, um, when I hit a thousand dollars in my regular savings account, I move it over to the big savings account. But that, what I mean by that is I opened up a high yield savings account. And while I'm talking, I'm going to do my makeup while I'm talking. So you guys can kind of see, um, but the, and then if you have any questions about what products I use, just let me know down in the comments section, please. <laughs> okay. So. I opened up a high yield savings. Now what the high yield savings is going to do is that's going to give you a higher rate of return annually on your money. So let's say you have a 5% return. If you have 5% return on a thousand bucks and that means you're going to make $50 that year on that thousand dollars. Okay. Most high yield savings are not 5%. Mine is 4.74. And I believe mine is through Synchrony, so I believe you can still get that rate. But the thing is, is um, you need to invest in a high yield savings account. The one I have is free to open, no minimum deposit. You can put as much money or as little money as you want. You don't have to have reoccurring deposits, which is what I like about it. Um, it's just all around one of the best savings I had. The only problem is that it takes a couple days to transfer money to and from. So you always make sure you have that money in your account. Don't overdraft your account by any chance. Just always make sure that you have that money in your account. So with that being said, so once you put your money in a high yield savings account, it's mainly meant to stay there. Like you're not gonna just be taking money out of your high yield savings account every day. You know, it's gonna mainly be there for emergencies, um, hey, you need money in a couple days and transfer it out. Uh, it's not going to be something where you're going to want to keep moving money out. I think you can only move money out six times a month out of a high yield savings um, without any penalties or fees. If you start taking money out of it very rapidly, um, they will close it, I believe, or you'll have you'll have fees associated with that. Um, so definitely would recommend opening a savings account, a high yield one. If you know you have some money that you want to just kind of let sit for a while. Um, I will have some money here in a little bit that I just kind of want to let sit for a while. And I told myself, once I hit $1,000 in any of one of my accounts, uh, I have two savings accounts, I'm saving for two separate things, then I will move that 1000 over. And then I'll just re remind myself which account has the thousands of dollars. Which I don't have thousands of dollars right now. Don't get me wrong. I would love to have thousands of dollars. I don't have that. But I'm just saying, once I hit a thousand on any account, I would then take that thousand and move it over. So I'm not keeping it in my new, my regular savings. That way I can earn the interest on it. Okay. So what I do right now is I have two separate savings accounts in my regular checking. So I have one that I call the my name savings and it's just my savings from anything i don't go out to eat like i didn't go out to eat today don't go out to eat i 
Um, I don't buy the makeup palette that I wanted. I sell my Stanley cup. Like I sold my Stanley cup today. Um, I sell a couch. I sell anything that I, that I had that is extra money to me. There's my money has extra money to, to me, right? That I don't need for a bill that I don't need right now for a bill. I will put that money into that account. So off the top of any money I make. So if I make $500, I automatically, automatically put 5%, no, I'm sorry, 10%, 10% into this, um, my name is Tori, but Tori save account. So every month I take 10% of my money, no matter what it is. If it's $10,000, $10, I take $100 out and put it into this Tori save account, okay? That's the first savings. The second savings is the savings that me and my husband have created. It's not joint account. We don't have our money together. We have our money separate. We just pay bills separately. That's how we work. The separate account is a 15% that I put in that account minimum. I put more, but minimum um, of my income for a house, for a down payment on a house, for a future house for our family. So... I'm currently saving right around 25% of my income. Now, so for some people that may not be, that may not be something that you can do. Um, you may have to save less. You may have to save more. I don't know your financial goals. But for me, right now, 25% of my income works for me. Um, it, it equals to about um, 500 a paycheck is pretty much what it equals out to be. Okay. So, I'm... Maybe a little bit more than that because I make about twenty five hundred a month. So you do the math. So it's a little bit more, but that gives me ch a chance to kind of save and just be able to really just put away money for different things at the same time. So the Tory Save account, which is just my personal money, um, is for emergencies. So I have um, very strong mental health. Um, things that happen to me every couple of years. Um, and I'll just be honest with you guys. I am bipolar. I struggle with that. I've struggled with that for most of my life. Um, and I have manic and depressive episodes. Okay. So at any point in my life, I could, there could become a time where I would need to be hospitalized and I would not be able to do my job. So it's happened multiple times before. Most of the time I do lose my job because, um, the employer, can't cover my two weeks off that I need. They just end up letting me go. Or they tell me if you take these two weeks off, we're going to have to let you go. Something happens to where I lose my job that I was working. Which, it's fine. It just happens. You A random thing happens and you just, the people don't want to save your spot for you. Whatever happens, it's not, it's fine. So... That being said, I personally need to have at least three months of income expenses into an account so that if I do have to go to the hospital or something, I have three months of expenses saved up um, in an account. Now, like I said, my husband would definitely cover my bills if I couldn't. Uh, there's no doubt about that. He would definitely cover my bills and make sure my dog was taken care of. But it's it's always good to help your family members out with things like that. Especially if you know, hey, I'm not going to have a job for two months after I got out of the hospital. What am I going to do for income? So it's very good to just have that have that talk with your family and friends. If you do have medical concerns or if you know, hey, I'm going to be out of work for a certain number of time. Um, it's just always good to have those talks, especially if you have mental health um, concerns. Oh, that powder is too dark. Um, mental health concerns or if you just kind of just want to um be on the up and up with that um the other uh the other reason that I had that savings is for vacation so my family is down in florida so i'm nowhere near florida and for privacy's sake i'm not going to be giving out the state that i am, am located in but the only thing is i'm pretty far away from florida so the only thing is is i have to pay for flights or driving down to florida so that being said, that costs money, flights, all that kind of stuff. So I keep a lot of money in that savings account for for traveling, for pretty much just pretty much just all that stuff, traveling, emergency funds. So I really need to have quite a bit of money. Now I have to add up how much my bills are 
monthly and kind of just go over that um pretty soon um and kind of see like what bills i really need to be having in that fund um and how much money i need so i need to go do a budget but that's good write down all your bills see how much monthly money you need coming in and going out you should have minimum three months of, of monthly living expenses in a savings account because if something happens and you can't work for three months Who's going to cover your bills? You know, so you have to have plan for these types of things so that if the worst happens, you're not just left and you're not just like, what do I do? You know, so those are things that I kind of account account for. So um, with that being said, um, any of this stuff is very doable. Um, but then in addition to the 10% the and the 15%, 10% in the regular account for everything and the 15% for the house. Um, I also do a savings challenge for the regular money. So this um, year I'm doing a dollar for the month of January, $2 for February, $3 for March. And so every day you save a dollar or $2 or $3. Every month that goes by, you get higher and higher. So December would be $12 a day that you would save. And so the, what this really does is this just kind of gives you an extra, I think it's like $2,200 when you get to the end of the year just extra money that you're saving like January was only $31 right but I saved that already and it's like I'm not seeing that money I'm just like okay I've already saved it you know it's not it's not in my possession so I'm not like having to be like oh I, I missed that money you know because it's already been saved it's already been taken out of my regular account um I don't miss it and I don't see it with that being said, you can take, you can do whatever savings plan that you think of, but those are just some of the ones I've found online from doing, looking at videos and stuff that I really have kind of like adopted for my own. And I really have been like, wow, this is a cool savings plan. I think I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. And like I said, you don't have to have the most money. You don't have to dwindle yourself short and like have no money in your account you're gonna want to have some type of expenses and monthly allowance because you're gonna there's gonna be stuff that you need to buy there's stuff everyone needs to buy um i don't care if you're the most smartest penny pincher in the world you're still gonna you're still gonna want things you know it's just gonna it's gonna come up and you're gonna be in the store and be like well what do i spend and if you can't spend any money you're just gonna drive yourself crazy and then you're just gonna be like why don't I just budget for this? You know, it's one thing to say, hey, this month I'm going to spend $100 extra on things that I don't need that I just want, you know. But if you just have an unlimited budget and you don't budget for anything extra, then on top of that, on top of going broke because you're going to be spending more money than what you have, you're also not going to be fulfilled because you're going to be buying things aimlessly instead of actually just really enjoying what you can buy which is you know whatever your budget allows for you know like for instance I was gonna go buy makeup sponges from Walmart disposable makeup sponges and I stopped myself and I decided no I'm not gonna buy that because I already had I already have makeup sponges um in my vanity so I'm using my beauty blender tonight instead of using a makeup sponge I'm using my beauty blender because I know I can save a couple dollars you know um I sold my Stanley cup today because those Stanley cups are going for like $55 and I bought it thinking okay I'd use it yeah it was a nice cup but it's not the end of the world to not have a Stanley cup you know what I mean like everyone has Stanley cups it's not the end of the world to not have a Stanley cup there's bigger things in life than not having a Stanley Cup. Um, so I just think that this blush is pretty, pretty. And this is the Glossier uh, Cloud Paint and Puff. This is so pretty. But yeah, I just, I think that our uh, first step is open a high yield savings account, okay? Second step, separate your savings. Don't just save in one account. 
have different goals for different things and then decide, okay, once you get to a goal, a money goal, then you're like, all right, now reward yourself. You know, you don't want to just always be no fun and no play all, or all save and no play. You want to save money. And then once you hit a certain goal um, or something, something where you are hitting a goal um, or something that you like, once you hit a goal for something, you're definitely going to want to make sure you reward yourself for hitting that goal. Um, whether it be going out to eat dinner or going to get ice cream or um, going to see, going to the park, going to an amusement park that's cheaper or going to buy something that you've been really wanting or something. You just definitely want to reward yourself for saving. There we go. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then the third step is keep making those deposits, even though it may seem small, even if you're only transferring $2 to your savings account. And the more you put in is the more money you have for your future. And also too, with going with debt and stuff, pay off your debt first. Save your thousand bucks emergency fund. Just save 500, just save a little bit of money for an emergency fund and then pay off that debt. Because the more time you end spend paying 30% interest on that store credit card is more less money in your pocket. So if you have a store credit card, like I have an Ulta card, I have a Petland card. If you have an, a store credit card that you have money charged to, just pay it off. Like do not play with store cards because they will not only charge you so much interest, late fees if you are late, um, sorry, this is the watermelon setting the spray. Um, they will charge you so much money if you're late. I just, I had an Ulta card. I just paid it off and I'm like so grateful that I paid it off because you may not want to pay it off. You might be like, man, like I already spent the money. Like I don't want to pay it off because we all get like that where we don't want to pay off debt once we have spent it because we don't remember what we bought or we just don't want to pay it. It's just a debt. It's a bill, you know? Um, but I can tell you from experience, I had an Ulta card that I had racked up when I was 18 and I didn't pay it off and they, they came after me and I paid it off until I was early twenties and they got all their money plus some. So it's like, you just, you really want to be smart with taking out credit cards and not paying them back. You just definitely want to pay your bills and just really make sure that you are just borrowing what you can pay back. Um, and don't, if you have, you're buying something at a store on a store card, pay it the same day. If you can make a payment on that card that same day. Uh, if you want the points, I don't care if it's 5,000 million points, you know, you don't need the credit card. You know, it's fine to keep things open if you don't want to ruin your credit by closing a card. But honestly, the best solution is just to close it. Like, even if it does hurt your credit just a little bit, closing that card is going to be way better for your credit. Um, I have so many, I had so much stuff in collections. Now I only have a couple things in collections, but closing that card is going to be your best, best bet. Um, because closing that card is going to free up your life. I closed, I, um, I just closed my capital one card because we're only a $300 limit and it was pretty, uh, pretty pricey in the interest. I just closed it. And yeah, my, my score went down a little bit, but it was way better to close that than keep it open and have to pay the $39 annual fee. And on top of that, just all the other credit card fees they charge you. So, I would say snowball your debt. If all else fails, I would say snowball your debt if you can. Um, snowball it. Get, get rid of it as fast as you possibly can. Um, I know it's not popular opinion, but you definitely need to snowball that debt. And just 
wipe it out. After you snowball that debt, every money, any dollar you put in savings is your money. You know, instead of buying that, buying something. Basically, you have a set income every year, right? The more money you go goes out, the more money has to come in. So, the less you spend, the less you have to make. The more you make, you think... Automatically, your brain's going to tell you, oh, I can buy more, I can do more, I can spend more. You don't need to do that. Having less of an income or having more of an income and less of a spending is not only beneficial for you, but it's also beneficial for building that wealth. So if you make 50000 a year and spend forty nine, you got 1000 for the next year, you're not going to be building your wealth. You're going to be just building your house your stuff inside your house you're not going to be building what's called wealth you're just going to be building what you think will make you happy in the moment not what's going to make you happy down years from now and you definitely want to make sure that you are investing um i'm not really big into i just got stuck in my hair I'm not really big into investing i think honestly even with the videos i've seen some of the girls um, even when they invested, they were only making a 5% return on their investment money. And the high yield savings is going to give you that, that five, pretty much that 5%. So honestly, I would just put your money in a high yield savings because it's going to be the best bet for you. And it's going to give you the highest, um, rate of return on your money. And it's going to be the best. I think it's going to be the best bet for you. Just because it's it's not a no it's a no brainer you're not gonna lose your money. Now on an investment you could lose some money, but on a um, on something like that you can't lose money because it's an investment. It's not an invest it's not an investment it's it's backed it's FDIC insured, so you won't be losing your money. But yeah, this is my. So this is my makeup look. It was pretty simple. It was just a little bit of eyeshadow, a little bit of mascara, some brow gel, um, some foundation, some powder, some blush. And then I put a little bit of that contour cream kind of. I think it did a little bit of bronzing, but I don't know if it did. If you have any comments or questions about the products I used, please don't hesitate to comment down below. I love to hear from you guys to see um, what you guys think about my makeup looks and all that kind of stuff. Anything for advice for savings, I actually start, just started reaching the save, watching the savings channels and savings videos, and I really think that they're very um, helpful and encouraging, and I just really think that starting out doing the savings challenges um, can really, really benefit um, just everything that I do on a daily basis that can really help um, a lot of other people, so... Anything that I find or I think is is exciting or encouraging, I'll definitely share with you guys and just see like what you guys think about certain things. But I'm definitely in the mode to use and use and let you guys know what I use up in my videos. Just use I use products up. Not don't buy anything unnecessarily. Um, and I did return some stuff to Sephora um, the other day just because I wanted to. to um, kind of use what I already have before buying that stuff, but I did get the Fleur Father Figure perfume and it smells amazing. So I'm super excited. But if you guys have not checked out the Fleur Father Figure perfume, check it out. It is literally amazing. Next time you go into Sephora, smell it. You'll probably be amazed. I was amazed. I bought it. Also, if you buy it off Fleur's website, you can get a rollerball for free. So it's pretty much $98, but that's for the full size and the rollerball. So I, I did that deal um, where you can get both. So, um, but yeah, that is definitely something that I have been doing. And I did definitely bought that Fleur, but I returned my other Fleur one. I'm not your baby because I like the father figure one more. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any 
tips or tricks on how to use up makeup. I'm just in the mode where I have all this eyeshadow palettes and I'm like, how am I gonna use all these eyeshadow palettes? So I'm tr trying to like see if I wanna post some of them for sale and see what I wanna do um, with some of them just because I have so many and there's only two eyes to use eyeshadow. So I really need to come up with an idea of getting rid of some of this stuff just because I don't want to go bad and I don't want to um, keep things that I'm not going to use. So if you guys have any tips or tricks that you guys did with your eyeshadow or what you guys did to downsize your makeup collection, what you did with your eyeshadow, I cannot donate to Women's Shelter. They, it has to be brand new. So unfortunately, not in my state. I cannot do that. But if you guys have any tips or tricks of what you guys did with old eyeshadow, if you would like a palette, <laughs> if you'd like to buy a palette from me, please email me. My email is in the description. And I can let you know which palettes I have. I have so many different palettes um, you can get a pretty discounted palette from me. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to catch you on my next video. As always, stay, start saving those money and stay safe and I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye. Stay happy, beautiful. Stay happy, beautiful. Bye.